morning everybody, thank you for coming. Um, like uh, Robin, I wanted to say thank you to James and Lois Denning very much for letting us borrow their lovely holiday home this morning. Um, Finch Cox was a working host in 2010 and uh, when the uh, tenant of it decided to leave, James looked at what else he could do with the building. Um, he did look at residential use, but that would have involved him splitting this beautiful building up into parts because the residential market would not easily have accepted a property of this size. Um, so after quite a lot of discussions, he decided to do a holiday let instead. Um, he embarked on this um, in 2011, and with his usual speed and decisiveness, he brought the, this amazing building to the market absolutely on time, to my amazement. <laughs> and um, this is uh, what they did with it, which is really very beautiful. I'm going to look at some case studies later on, and I will be going into the, uh, the financial side of this building to give you some idea about how it worked and the returns on it later on. So, just to give you some background, um, on me before I actually start. Um, my background has always been in property. Um, I own and run um, a three um, agency, a state agency as well, which is called Foxwood McLean and is in Kent and Sussex. Um, and um, holiday letting started as a diversification from the main estate agency eight years ago. Uh, we started because one of our farming uh, land Lords wanted to move into holiday letting because he was struggling with planning and as a result of that I gaily said oh yes I can help you with that um, and to my amazement found myself in a tourism business um, having thought I was still in an estate agency. So that was a very large learning curve for me and the company and Mulberry Cottages was born from that. Um, it's now a fully-fledged business in its own right um, and we separated it from the estate agency about three years ago so that it runs as, as a sort of sister company to it, but they're completely separate now. Okay, so holiday lettings. Is it for you? So first of all, I just wanted to sort of give you the background to um, how um, holiday lettings are. I mean, it's we're now in a situation where holiday lettings has gone from being a niche market into the mainstream. It's one of the main things that you can do with, with um, a building these days. It's had a huge amount of growth. There is robust return on investment and it is developing one of your existing assets if you convert it from a barn. So it is a very sensible thought and thing that you can do with a derelict building, which so many of the, uh, farms have these days. So, why has there been growth? Well, basically, holiday lettings benefited from the recession. In 2008, um, the UK staycation market started in earnest. There'd always been people who um, stayed in the UK uh, for holidays, but it suddenly boomed because people could not afford to go abroad. And at the same time, the euro was very strong, so if they did go abroad, it made it very difficult for them to afford it. With that came the start of the, uh, the quality of the accommodation rising. So when the UK market stayed in England, they suddenly found that the, what they were staying in was really very nice. And so they then realised that actually they fell in love again with the UK. And um, we all know people who've done that. They were going to Spain or Portugal or wherever. And then they found that um, actually it's considerably easier to bundle the dog, the kids and everyone else in the car and drive somewhere than get on an aeroplane and be caught at one of, uh, of the many problems that you get caught at airports. So it, it grew as a, as a result of that. And at the same time, while we were going through the depths of our recession, um, our overseas market grew. And uh, the Europeans were finding it very cheap to come here, so they in turn arrived as well. And um, we, uh, it's all been helped by uh, not only things like the Olympics, which showcased the country, 
Um, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee showcased the country. We then followed that with um, umpteen uh, exports of our TV programmes. Downton Abbey, Sherlock, Midsummer Murders, you name it, the international guests have it now. And it showcased how beautiful the UK is, which encouraged visitors as well. So if we look at some stats, the market since 2009 has as a whole grown by 20%. All this information is in your pack. Um, holiday cottages now account for 24% of all available tourism bed stock. Amazingly, the tourism industry is now worth £22 billion to the UK and rising. And last year, visits from the European market grew by 12% and from the non-European market by 6%. And the government are now stating that tourism is the fastest growing sector in the, in the UK in the last five years. Despite the fact that they're not paying as much attention to it as we'd all like them to. So, you can take advantage of this. Okay, so if you have a building and you're thinking about uh, diversifying into it, how do you get going? Well, I would implore you to take advice at every stage. Because the main thing when you're looking at doing um, a conversion for holiday lets is that you've got to identify your market and you've got to target it. Because there is such growth in the overall stock of holiday accommodation, it's becoming much more funneled and you need to aim at a market and stick with that market. And you need to convert your property with that in mind. So if you look at, we wanted to give you an idea on the sort of targets that we're looking at. So for instance, here we might be looking at the multi-generational family market. Or you might be aiming at the pets, because a lot of your properties will be in the country and it will suit the market. About 40% of all visitors have pets. That's very fun. Can't see. If you've got a bijou romantic place, you might aim for couples, or if you have something in a town or a city that's small, you might aim at the couples market. Or the disability market. Now this is a really big growing market, disability, because if you think about the, age, uh, the aging population, 68% um, of all the wealth in the UK is owned by people over 55. And this market is growing. More than half of the population will be over 65 by 2020. So this market of being able to appeal to people who are not so steady on their feet or have hearing or visual uh, impairment is growing and it is definitely a market to watch. Celebrations. We're back in James's beautiful property again. Although there's celebrations of all types, but these, uh, these parties for the noughties, for the 40s, 50s, 60s, are a huge part of the holiday letting market, particularly out of high season. And lastly is the corporate market, which is growing. It completely disappeared, but it is starting to reappear as uh, companies feel able to, sit, to be seen to be spending money. And I'm sure you can all remember in the 2011 and 12, they just completely clamped down on any corporate entertainment. Um, but they're now starting to spend money again. And this is a market that's very good for midweek. So if you have people staying for a weekend, you might be able to attract some businesses during the week, which obviously boosts your income. So now we're going to look at some case studies because I thought it might be helpful if we actually went through some numbers so that you can try and understand um, how the numbers actually work. So if we start first of all with um, Finchbox here, where we are today. Um, this was converted, as I said, in 2011 and it cost £650,000 to convert. Um, the uh, it took time to build to uh, develop it, but it is now producing a return on investment of 10%. And 
And that is after the, the costs, which are uh, high. You should expect in a holiday cottage to spend between 40 and 50% of all your income will go on the, the costs. But the figures are so high that you will still get a higher return on investment. So with this one, we obviously were aiming at all types of the group market. And uh, we and James um, are marketing very clearly to groups, celebrations, uh, corporate, because that is what a house of this size would attract. Next, we want to show you the other extreme, which is a tiny um, little mobile home, um, because it is just as easy to spend very little money and get a very good return on your investment at the other end of the scale. This was a derelict mobile home in the grounds of somebody's house. It had been occupied and it was connected to services. Um, and the owner decided to uh, do it up and holiday let it. And um, that's it as the development was going on. They spent uh, £8,000 on it. And uh, we started letting it last July. So we didn't have a whole summer because with properties of this kind, whether they're glamping, shepherd's huts, whatever, they're really, the market is from about um, March, April, depending on the weather, through to about October. Um, they're quite difficult to let in the winter because they're often in the middle of the field and therefore not great um, for getting to. But um, this cost £8,000 to um, restore. And uh, in our first summer, so we let it for July, August and September, um, we uh, received just over um, £3,000 in income. We would expect this year to get between five and seven once it's up and running and we have a whole season. But even last year we were getting a return on that £8,000 of 37.5%. So um, however you look at it, this is a great market to go for. But the reason this worked is it has been very cleverly styled to suit the market it was aiming at, which is couples. It's very cute. Um, and it's got lots of bunting in it and mismatched china and all the things that people will enjoy just for um, a, a weekend away for young couples. And that's why it's been so successful. Okay, so this was, um, this is a farmhouse in uh, Somerset. Um, and um, this was owned by a farmer and he'd let it for many, many years to uh, vet students. And um, it got so tatty, it got sort of beyond the pale, despite the fact that they were actually paying really good rent, it got to the stage where he really needed to do it up. And um, he, uh, I went to see him to talk to him about whether holiday lets would be a good alternative. Um, but it's quite a big ask to be able to compete with the sort of um, rent that students can produce. And I wasn't sure whether we could. But he decided he'd had enough of his students. I think he'd had them for about 12 years, and I think he decided the time had come for a different sort of tenant. So he did it up completely, um, and we've ended up with a property that sleeps five bedrooms and five bathrooms. One bedroom and bathroom are downstairs. And um, the income is, this year, we would expect a property of this type to produce 35 to 50,000. And this particular one is coming in at the late 40s at the moment, and we're in our second year of letting it for him. So his, um, he is getting, um, uh, his income has doubled, and obviously his costs are high, but he told me the other day, I spoke to him on the phone last week, that his, he thinks his costs are coming in um, in the early 30s because some of the cleaning is done by his wife. She does the, um, the laundry, so it's not as... Um, uh, he did all the work out, um, but he said his um, expenses are about 32%. But he still believes it's perfect against the students. Um, and it's ideal for couples and actually suits families. This is not so much a celebration house. Um, it's cottagey inside with lots of pretty small rooms and it suits groups of families <coughs> going away together, generational families. Lastly, I want you to, to look at a big um, complex. Um, this is a, a complex in Kent, um, and there are four buildings. So there's um, a barn, um, there is a pair of what were cow buyers, 
which turned into one bedrooms, and there's a nose house without um, its cowl. <clears throat> This was uh, converted in stages. Um, the owner um, didn't want to expose himself financially too much, so he started uh, with the, the two little ones and finished, and the large barn was done last. So the, the, the pair of um, one-bedroom cottages and the oast were done first. And we were always aiming this uh, property as a whole, once it was completed, at um, all the different markets because we had two one bedrooms, we had a property that slept 10 and we had the big barn that sleeps uh, 26. And this is an interesting uh, mix because to start with, in the first year that we let it, they all let separately and we rarely let them together. Now um, we're about, we're in year five of, of letting this development and um, all of them let as a whole, and they let months and months in advance. So these big complexes suit lots of different people, and, and we infill the individual ones um, as and where we need to. The income for this um, is well in excess of 200,000 for the development, um, but any complex with a mixture of sizes, we would expect to get somewhere between 175 and 250 thousand pounds um, and we're still getting increases year on year of 20 percent at the moment although i think we're heading for for sort of a bit of a plateau now because without more development we've really squeezed its margins as much as we can but it is extremely popular and it's already starting to let for 2016 2015 as well underway um, so that's a, it's complexes work very well because you're attracting so many different markets Okay, so it's all very well talking about the money, but we need to look at the challenges um, that there are for holiday letting. So the first thing to think about is how are you going to find your customers? Where are they going to come from? And it's, it's all about, the, the internet is all about the internet and it's becoming more and more crowded. And it's difficult with a small budget to get noticed. So part of your issue is, is if you decide you don't want to use an agency, which is obviously plugged into all the markets and, and will produce uh, guests for you, it's trying to make your property stand out from the crowd. And that is all about the look, because it Everything that you do to do with the marketing will be how it looks. And the better you make it look, the better the photographs will be, 